Taking photos at night on your phone used to look terrible, but if you purchased a new smartphone recently, you may have noticed that your night photos have improved. Ah, much better. You can even take photos of stars. I'm Julian Chikachi, reviews editor at Wired, and I've been reviewing smartphones for over five years. How has smartphone photography gone from this to this beautiful photo? Before we get into the technology behind the new night modes, let's first have a little chat about bad photos. Take a look at this photo here, taken on an iPhone 5 around 2014. A couple elements stand out to me, like that classic lens flare or the blur. No matter how nice or advanced the camera is, it's always gonna need a good source of light. That's exposure, the amount of light that reaches your camera sensor. Right now, this lovely crew has lit me really well. Let me show you. If they cut the lights, now I'm backlit and underexposed. This is the iPhone 3G in low light, and this is the iPhone 13 Pro in low light. Let's get the lights back on. Part of the reason the iPhone 3G looks so underexposed is because it didn't spend a lot of time taking the photo. That's shutter speed. That's the length of time the camera's little door is open, exposing light onto the camera sensor. One of the main reasons night mode on your phone asks you to stay still is because the longer you have the shutter open, the more light you can let in, which will produce a brighter photo. But here's the thing. In night photos, the seconds it's asking you to wait, it's actually taking more and more photos to make a composite with machine learning algorithms. So night mode is a part of the field of computational photography. I'm gonna call up Ramesh Raskar at the MIT Photo Lab to get into the technical element of how it works. Hi, Julian. Would you be able to tell me what exactly is happening when you take a night photo in a modern day smartphone? There are, there are three elements um, in any photography. There is capture, there is process, and then there's display. And what we have seen over the last 10 years is there is amazing improvement in all three areas. So how is the software actually changing what the photo will look like? You will hear all these terms, HDR, HDR+, night mode, smart HDR, but all of them are roughly doing the same thing. This key idea of so-called deep fusion, where you're fusing the photos by using machine learning and computer vision, is really the breakthrough in today's low-light photography. Could you explain HDR? So HDR, traditionally high dynamic range, simply means whether it's bright scene or a dark scene, you can capture that in a single photo. A smartphone it has seen you know, millions of photos of a sunset or a food or a human face. It has learned over time what are the best ways to enhance such a photo and how to either reduce the graininess or how to make it look more vibrant and choose the right saturation. Choosing those parameters is basically machine learning when it comes to photography. Now let's take a look at this machine learning in action by comparing some photos. The one on the left is the iPhone 3G, so quite a long time ago, and the one on the right is the iPhone 12. What are your first thoughts in what they're doing differently? So you can see that you know the previous phones just gave you a photo from a single instant. The photo on the right is actually not physically real in the sense that there were different things. People were you know bobbling their heads and the lights were flashing. And so the photo is actually composed by multiple instances. So when you try to fuse these multiple photos, the light in one photo could be at one direction, light in the later photo could be in a different direction, and it's taking some clever decisions to create an illusion as if this photo was taken at a single instant. Here you can also see the HDR into effect where you know the audience is completely dark in the iPhone 3G photo, whereas you can actually see everyone's heads in the other one. You know, If an AI is learning how to color correct a night scene based on what it thinks it should be, are we moving away from photorealism? Uh, Julian, I think photorealism is dead. We should just bury it, and it's all about hallucination. The photo you get today has almost nothing to do with you know, what the physics of the photo says. It's all based on what these companies are saying the photo should look like. So yeah, I took one of these with the Pixel 6 and one of these with the iPhone 13 Max Pro. What happened there that would have caused those colors to be very different between the two photos? These two companies have decided to give you a very different photo experience. The Pixel might have taken 20 photos. It's also recognizing you know, certain features, you know, whether there's a sky, is it outdoor, is it what kind of white balance it has? There's some automatic beautification also being applied. So most of the photos we see are hallucinations, but not the physical representation 
of uh, the world out there. These companies are providing us with ways to control some of that, like turn off that beautification feature or maybe make it even stronger. Um, do you think that's sort of where the compromise will sort of lie with the people that do want to maybe tailor some of their own shots to give them that control and those options to tweak their settings? The innovations in all these three areas have actually taken the control away from us. Uh, but in reality, it's not that difficult for these companies to provide those controls uh, back to us. They're just making an assumption that most consumers would like to just take a photo, click a button, and get something they really would like to see, whether it matches the reality or not. I think the thing that we really care about is, you know, we go on a trip and you reach Paris and the Eiffel Tower is, you know, in a haze. And what you would like to see is take a photo with your family with Eiffel Tower in the back as if it's a bright sunny day, right? And that's where, as a consumer, you yourself are willing to separate the physics the reality from hallucination, because if somebody can paste just a bright, shine, bright sunny photo of Eiffel Tower behind your family, you'll be pretty happy about it. So, you know, we kind of focused on night photography. Every time we look at the nighttime photos, those actually do seem to be improving year over year. But broadly, what would you say are some of those challenges that are left for photography in general when it comes to smartphones? In terms of night mode, there are lots of challenges right now. I mean, if you wanted to do something that's high speed, uh, you know, it's very difficult to capture that. Uh, at nighttime. Uh, it's also difficult to capture very good color uh, in nighttime because nighttime photos have, uh, when they use burst mode, uh, the challenge with burst mode is that every frame has a so-called read noise. So there's a cost, you know, a, a camera pays every time it reads the photos. Uh, but the other technique many companies are using is just using lots of tiny lenses. Now some phone companies have five lenses, and that's one trick to capture just five times more light. How does that affect the rest of the phone's capabilities? What sort of can we expect uh, in the future? A photography or imaging should give us superhuman powers, you know? So we should be able to see through fog, we should be able to see through rain, you know, we should be able to see through, see like a butterfly and see all the spectrums, not just the three colors. I think the notion that we should just see what we are seemingly experiencing is not enough on displays, but I would like to see a beautiful viewfinder. You know, if I'm in Paris and as I'm moving my viewfinder, it should tell me, hey, if you take a picture of that Eiffel Tower, it's very jaded. A lot of people have already taken a photo, but if you, if you kind of keep rolling and there's this tiny statue, actually not enough people have taken the photo of this. So I think we're gonna see this very interesting progress in capture, processing, and display. And I'm very excited about what photography of tomorrow will look like. I'm gonna show you some of my favorite features with the iPhone 13 Pro and the Google Pixel 6. We're doing low light photography, so let's cut the lights. Well, let's open up the camera and see what happens with night mode. You can see that I'm already in a pretty dark area, so night mode has been triggered here. Once you tap it, you can actually control the length of the exposure. So if you think that you might need a longer shot. Sometimes that might produce a brighter image. If I tap on the background, it'll expose for the background and it will also change the focus there. So you can actually slide it up and down to change the brightness or the shadows in the shot. Those are just a couple of features in the camera app themselves. All right, let's bring the lights back on. So we have to talk about tripods. Tripods are an easy way to up your photo game, especially at night. Of course, you know, a large problem of taking photos at night is the handshake of when you're taking a photo. Once more, uh, can we cut the lights? Can I get a volunteer? So now I'm gonna first take a photo without a tripod and see how it reacts then. So you can just basically switch over to the night sight mode and tap the photo. But now, if I switch over to a tripod, it's gonna be much more stable. And if I tap the button, it knows that it's on a tripod and you can see it is taking a lot longer to take the photo. It's taking multiple, multiple images of different exposures. Shooting handheld is a problem because the shutter speed is trying to take in as much light as possible, and that means your hands are shaking and that's influencing the shot. That's what makes it impossible taking photos of stars without a tripod. Certain phones like the Pixel 6 let you take photos of the star with a certain astrophotography mode, and essentially it's doing what night mode is doing, but for a much longer period of time, like two, three, sometimes even five minutes. 
And what it really needs is the phone to be on a tripod. If you're curious about what some of our favorite phones are for taking photos, or maybe just looking at other camera gear that might help you take some of these better photos, well, we have guides on wired.com. And as Ramesh said, it's gonna be really interesting to see how our cameras improve in the future, whether they'll completely decide on their own exactly what photo you should take, or if you'll have any control left. Photorealism is dead. Now that's dark, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I hope this video helped you understand a little bit more about night photography, and I hope you continue going out there taking lots and lots of photos.